Hey, 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 guys. This is Jeremy with uh, Jeremy Lou Photography, Raw Focus. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We have an amazing podcast for you. We're speaking with a good friend of mine, Megan Burke, who I know from Getaway Reno Tahoe Magazine. Uh, but as you'll find out, she does a lot of other things, including about to pr uh, start a virtual kind of, uh, I don't know, virtual platform for, for businesses. They work with a lot of local Tahoe Reno businesses and I think she's going to kind of take this on her own and we'll kind of get some more information on that. But um, continue my journey of just kind of getting to know people and uh, people in my life that I work with professionally that I consider friends in a friendly manner. Um, I want to get to know these people a little bit more. So where we kind of talk about her love life, how she got here, um, how she has a twin. I've known her for five years and I didn't know she had a twin until like four months ago. And I, th I think she saw her post something on social media um, with her twin. So, um, it's kind of crazy. My mom was a twin. I, um, which is also said that we're supposed to have twins. So my kids might have twins. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but, um, twins have always fascinated me and my mom's not around. So I stole my aunt Karen. So we still kind of have like that, that, that twin thing going on. Uh, but Megan lives in uh, Lake Tahoe. Um, I think on the Nevada side, Zephyr Cove. And we kind of talk about COVID-19, what's going on with the business and how they are kind of adapting to everything and some projects that we're also doing together as well, where we get to, um, I, I really want to document Reno, Tahoe. I want to document what's going on within our world. So um, we're working on that. So you guys will see some stuff that I'm, I'm going to be doing, um, hopefully going into empty casinos, seeing uh, people in masks, uh, handing out food, delivering food, what we're doing for our first liners uh, and all that fun stuff. So uh, Megan is amazing ballet dancer, uh, dancer, actor, model, personality, um, and uh, extremely curious to find out today that she considers herself what I am, kind of an introvert on our, on our energy talk, uh, our energy talk. This was never meant to be an energy talk thing. But uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Without further ado, uh, here's me and Megan Burke. Good. Where are you? I'm in my home office. Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah, Do you have an office office? Well, let's just say you could stand in one point of the room and see my, you know, kitchen bar, kitchen, living room, oh, nice. room office. So I consider it like a divided house, but you can also see every room. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, wait, where do you live now? Do you live... Still by Round Hill or, or Round Hill Pines or somewhere else? I live over by um, Glenbrook. So uh, it's like Upper Lake Ridge. It's in between Zephyr right. Cove and Glenbrook, kind of like right before Cave Rock. Is it, um, does it go up the hill or down the hill? Down the hill, right? It's kind of like going up. So you, have, you don't reach like the top of Spooner just yet. Yeah. Um, it's one of those communities that are like right on the upper side of the mountain though. So I had to yeah. get tires to even just get to my driveway in the snow. Oh, that's stupid. Stupid Tahoe. <laughs> you can't do it's stuff like, like that. The funny part is like I got studded tires because I wasn't going to. I'm like, you know, it'll be fine. I'll just have winter snow tires. And the first time right. snowed, I just like slid down the three different like huge hills. Oh, was yeah. So I got studded tires. But you figure in Tahoe, it really only snows that aggressively. Maybe... 10 or 12 times where it's right. like you need them. Um, so like the rest of the winter, I'm just like, da -da 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 -da. I'm like the clear roads and like going driving you, to Reno on my studded tires. Carson right. <laughs> Is that bad for the tires to do that? Um, I mean, it'll wear down the metal more quickly. Um, right. Other than that, no. And it just kind of makes them last uh, less the, the length you can use them is, is less. Um, right. I found out that valet at casinos, they aren't allowed to park cars with studded tires, which is so weird. Why? I don't know. I have no What's idea. liability in that? That's stupid. Well, another thing too is if you stop too aggressively with studded tires, you will actually see sparks. Oh, have you done it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like bumper, bumper traffic in Rudo and all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, Get out of my way. <laughs> 
They're like, this chick's crazy. This is how, this is how we drive. Uh, how's Tahoe right now? Tahoe's good. It's a little gloomy and wet right now. Um, it's pretty warm, so it's melting the snow. It's kind of like 45 right now, but I got to tell you, okay. I'm over the winter. I'm ready for summer. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we don't have anything down here. We're just not going out. Have you, are, you, are you quarantined? I mean, are you truly quarantined? Are you still going out? What are you doing? Um, I, you know, I'm taking it seriously. I think there's, there's elements that you want to believe. It's like mass hysteria. And then there are other elements that you want to, you just want to do the right thing to, to right. Make sure you're keeping others safe and support them. So it's like definitely that in between, you know, I've with where I live, I'm like 15 minutes outside of South Lake Tahoe. So, um, I'm already very remote. Um, right. so I just, kind of, you know, I've got a forest in my backyard and a pier across <laughs> the lake. So just kind of doing some natural quarantine and natural therapy in, in the outdoors and keeping it simple. I like that. Yeah, it's it's just weird because yeah, because there's more people down here, and it's really about the other people. And you know, I we go to the, we I try to go to Safeway and Costco like once a week, and people aren't taking it seriously. They're not wearing masks. They're not. You know, it, it's it's weird. Like there's lines for six foot rule, and nobody's standing in them. You're walking that, down hall, you know, down the aisles, and people aren't moving or doing shit for you. And um, that, that's ridiculous. The fact that things are actually set in place to make it easier to actually follow along and to actually, right. do, it's like just follow the rules. You know what I mean? Right. Like yes, there's that element where it's like, oh, it's control. It's well, it's <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it's like just do it. You know. Right. If, if we all have to buckle down for two weeks, three weeks to, to get out of this more quickly, then, then just do it. Well, my, my thing is, is once they close the casinos, that's when I was like, oh, shit. Like, they'd never close. Like, when has the casinos ever been closed? Ever. That's so much money every single freaking day. Uh, but the thing that irked me was finally yesterday, uh, Governor uh, Sisolak um, closed the the golf courses and I was like how are they still open like what what about golf courses was essential that people were able to still go out and golf right so that was weird you know I think um, not to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. one I do agree b there's also that element of like diminishing returns right in terms of keeping people's sanity and right. golf is not a sport where everyone's close together right in like um, an amphitheater or something like that Right. So I actually connected with Carson Valley Golf Course um, yeah. because they are a client of ours. And mm -hmm. um, they like the, 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 the pro shop is completely closed. You could only book a tea time online. It could only right. be for you and another person in your household. Um, the driving range is all of the spaces are at least six feet apart in terms right. of the driving range. Um, and they weren't allowing carts. So there were very strict rules in terms of- So people were walking it? <laughs> unless they couldn't, right? And then that would be a- A, a, a deterrent to go, to right? Go. <laughs> right. So I think in that regards of like actually going out and walking by yourself on a golf course to get some sunshine. I mean, obviously, like we're very lucky with where we are to be able to take a step into nature and not have anyone around us. Right. Where we can actually find that. I feel so bad for those people in those large cities who can't even go out their door. Right. Um, yeah. New York, New Jersey. Um, really? I mean, even the people like Montage, downtown Reno, um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I, I, yeah, and that's, that's the biggest thing. So, I mean, it's been weird. It's been adjusting, but um, that's kind of what I want to talk about today. So I want, uh, so in like seven minutes, like a couple minutes, we'll go on live uh, for about an hour and um, we're just going to keep this conversation going. So I'll monitor comments if they come. We've been uh, averaging like 15 to 20 people at a given time, but at the end of it, I think five or 600 views. So my focus isn't the live. Um, it isn't people jumping in. It's more of, I just want the interaction if it's there, but also to pimp out the, the, the channel and the, and the show. Um, mm -hmm. Raw focus. Oh, I, I subscribed to you on YouTube uh, a couple days ago. <laughs> my my profile? Yeah. yeah. Oh, three followers? It was, uh, I don't know how I linked it. I linked it from your, was it from your Facebook or something? I don't know. I had like yeah. a, a, a reel or something. and. Yeah, I think it was a late, well, I thought it was a getaway one. I thought it was uh, the Lake Tahoe, like the ski run. Um, there was a video on it, but yeah. I was like, oh, she has a YouTube. And I went to it and I'm like, subscribe. So I think I'm your fourth subscriber. 
I think you're five. Okay. Oh, okay. I didn't, yeah, that's cool. Whatever that works. I'm stepping up in the world. I have it's hard, man. It's so hard. It's um, it's like I, I the first like year I had YouTube. I think I had like maybe 200 subscribers, and I got serious into it. And I've been doing it for like six years, yeah. and now I'm up to like 3,800. But only because I started reviewing goalie apple cider vinegar gummies. So like these little apple cider, so I, I take apple cider vinegar every day, but then I transfer to a gummy form. Um, and I just bought it, reviewed it. And all of a sudden that's like the shit. Like everybody's like, Oh my God, I want to get this. So every day I get like a thousand views on it and people are adding me and adding me. So I have to keep doing these goalie reviews like every month <laughs> to like maintain my subscription base. And then the other big video that I had, and these have nothing to do with photography. Um, the other video I have that's really big is a chiropractor video of me adjust, or getting adjusted um, at my chiropractor's office, which that's huge. And then the other one's a haunted house that I made in our front yard. And during Halloween, I think um, my analytics, I think I was making like $500 a month yeah. because of that video. Yeah, so right now I make like three to 400 a month on YouTube just revenue that comes in from, from having. So like the people that do YouTube videos every day, I think it's every million views you get five, uh, you get 2000 per month. But how do you, how do you like, how do, I mean, it'll be interesting to have this conversation with you, right? Cause I gotta tell you, like, it's funny when you're like, we're just going to talk about you for an hour. I'm like, yeah, I'm not used to, talk, although I'm in the position that I'm in, I'm not used to talking right. about myself, if that even makes sense. Cause I'm like, but pardon me, but like, who the fuck cares? You know what I mean? Right. Like, I don't, and that's and that's not good, right? Because everyone has a story. But yeah. Just, okay. Well. But that's kind of the beauty of it. Like, you think nobody cares, but I mean, let's imagine these people just sitting at home right now, or or what if we were to review this five, ten years from now when you're doing something else, you're big, famous, you know, the little <laughs> person. Okay. Um, but like, that's really it. We're all just normal people. I'm a normal person. Um, and I was kind of talking about this yesterday on, on the cast too, but like, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm mimicking a lot of like the Dax Shepherds, like those podcasts that are out there mm -hmm. and really they just, they, but they talk to celebrities and they have this vast amount of information about the celebrity that they can tap into and talk about. And it's entertaining, but it's also like, yeah, we know that, you know, we know Alicia Keys is a singer. We know you're a comedian. We know whatever. Um, but I'm more about like, and I don't want this to be like a local Reno Tahoe thing. That's where we're starting right now. But I really just want people to know who we are, but it also gives us a plug into things. So I work with you guys a ton and this is half me, half you. So I work with you guys a ton with getaway. Um, you know, you've, you've modeled for me, you've been a model in these things and I kind of want to just push that out. And so theoretically it kind of promotes you as well in whatever you do. Um, but it's just kind of like me and my friends hanging out and if they don't care, they don't care. That's why we're just talking, you know, it's yeah. just me and you living the dream, but don't think about it that way. We're just going to talk and I don't care about cussing. I don't care about anything. Um, and yeah, if you want to bring something up, you can, if not, I'll bring it. And we just kind of, yesterday we were talking about dead babies for like 20 minutes. I was talking to another photographer who we do, uh, who does bereavements, which is like babies that come out and they don't survive. And so we talked, yeah, that was a 20 minute conversation. I mean, like literally, we didn't know. Babies. Like that wasn't yeah. like, usually. No, it's like photographing babies. funerals and dead babies. Um, Holy shit. I know, right? That's deep. M-E-G-H-A-N-B-U-R-K-E. -E. No E, Megan, uh, Megan with an H, Burke without an E. Yeah, who's the, fa is there a famous Burke with an E? Is there no, like the a. The only famous Burke is uh, without an E. No, yeah, there's. Oh, a, yeah, yeah, my bad. My bad. <laughs> slow on that joke. <laughs> what happened was. I'm not going anytime soon. Um, <laughs> no, I think there's a, is it, was there a Sarah Burke? Or like there's an actual Burke. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, there was something with an E. Brooke Burke. Oh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, and so some people are like, oh, you're going to be the next Brooke Burke. Yeah, well, I'm lucky because every time I start typing your name in, it just shows up before the E comes. So I'm like, oh, cool, I'm good. But I always have to remember how to spell Megan's first name, like any Megan. Because there's always like, is there an H? Is there, because you guys don't say different. You don't say Meghan. Okay, well, there's a story behind that. Like, my name is completely butchered all the time. All the time. Is it? And it's only now, 30 years later, where I'm yeah. to being like, all right, this is actually really impacting me. Mom and dad. So thanks for really making my name super complicated. Uh, what do people call you when they see this? Well, it's not necessarily, well, that's, 
so I have a hyphenated, hyphenated last name. Right. So my, my full name is Megan Elizabeth Burke Lieber. Pretty oh standard God. name. Um, my mom is Burke. My dad was Lieber. Um, so again, hyphenated. And then my entire life, I've grown up with Megan with an H. Okay, fast forward. I'm now, you know, in my teens. My mom and dad separated when I was two. So I only right. grew up with Megan Burke. By the time I looked at my birth certificate, I'm like, okay, so my official last name is hyphenated. And oh. mom, why is my, my name, my first name spelled wrong? And she's like, oh, well, the nurses spelled it incorrectly and I just never had it fixed. And I just, I just put so, the H in there. And I'm like, okay, so mom, my name is completely different on my birth certificate than literally what I've been using in every single piece of material my entire life. She's like, it's fine. It's fine. Well, now 30 years. It's like my social security card. Yeah. Correct, Has correct. anybody dinged you? Um, well, in terms of trying to like sign up for like utilities when I'm right. rental, like they can't find me in the system. <laughs> my real idea was a joke because then people also will just add an E on the end of Burke. Right. So like you figure Megan's fucked up, yeah. Burke spelled wrong, forgot the lever. So I remember at one point I had seven pieces of mail that right. had my name spelled. It was like Megan Lever, Megan Burke with an E, Megan without an H. Yeah. I like, so it was like, okay. I really I'll get, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, my name is spelled like the way it sounds, right? Jeremy. Um, but I'll still get like Jeremy's. But when people are like, I'll know a telemarketer is calling me because they can't read. And they'll be like, yeah, it's Jerome home, Jeremiah home. And I'm like, no, he's not available. Like, he's, this is the wrong number. Um, but for some reason in the mail, I get a lot of miss, like miss Jeremy Lou. And I don't know why. I don't know when that happened or what I did like in the past to be like, I'm a female or like, you know, the general automated thing. Come to our side. It's, it's way better. I mean, I could, but there's a few things holding me back. Um, <laughs> literally <all right>. three. <laughs> yeah, three things. All right, guys, uh, welcome to Raw Focus. We're talking with Megan Burke today. Um, I've known Megan for, oh God, like five years, six years, something like that. Um, we met uh, because her company, Getaway Reno Tahoe Magazine, GRT, hired me um, to do a cover shoot. And since then, I've been one of their photographers. And um, I like to call myself the lead photographer now, but you know how magazines work. Um, they're photographers for uh, tons of covers, tons of stuff. We've done um, modeling gigs together where I've shot models, a couple of them actually, and we got to go some cool places. Um, but today we're just going to kind of talk about Megan and what she does. She's stuck in Tahoe right now. Um, I don't want to say stuck, we're all quarantined. Uh, but Megan, thanks so much for tuning in. We are live, so people are watching. I have 14 whole people starting, which is awesome. We actually started about five minutes ago, but you didn't know. Um, so everybody's listening to us. But how's your day? What's going on? Um, I am just kind of getting ready to uh, uh, put together an, a new show, a virtual show from uh, the, the, my home, truly, uh, called Get Virtual. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of showcases what some of the businesses are doing to adjust and adapt in the area that we live in. Um, Getaway is obviously a tourism-focused brand, but with tourism being completely non-existent right now, um, it's kind of right. like, what can we do to not be silent? and to kind of pivot our approach to be able to support those who are doing amazing things in this community. And I'm super stoked to have you on board with that as well. Um, to, you know, get the behind the scenes right. photography, behind the scenes stories. So then once all this is over, we can just have something really positive to reflect back on, I guess, if that makes sense and inspiring. It does. I'm, I'm super excited. So when my biggest thing, when I became a photographer was the documenting of life. Like I, I really wanted the photos that I really loved were the ones that just kind of took the candid photos and, and kind of showcase what was happening. Things that would show up on time, whether it doesn't show up now, it shows up later. And so one of the exciting things is, uh, well, exciting, when the, when the coronavirus happened, everything was shut down, I really had this natural push to want to go out and document it. The closed casinos, the restaurants pushing things out, people wearing masks. And so I reached out to a couple of places and it was kind of a no-go. I don't know if people didn't want it documented or they, they weren't sure what they were supposed to do, right or wrong, and having a photographer there isn't beneficial. But when you guys came up to me, um, since I work with you guys, this was in my alley. So I'm very excited to start doing this. And yeah, we're gonna document as much 
realism as we possibly can right now. And we don't know what's going to happen with the images or the, the, the documentary or, or whatever in the future, but we'll have this little timeline. So you're doing, what is it like a virtual show? How's that going? How's that going to work? What, what is are people coming on? Is it zoom? What's going yeah, on there? So it's, it's, it's a zoom recording. So it's just like this platform, you know? So initially when all of this happened, it's like, Oh my God, we literally can't, prom can't promote anything. Or what are we going to talk about? Right. right. And all of a sudden it's like, well, we can't just sit back. You know, the big thing for me and a, and a big kind of leadership strength that I have is positivity. Um, I yeah. think, which is good and bad. Um, I think positivity can be really a great to lift other people, like other people's spirits up and really motivate right. and inspire. Um, at the same time, it can also be a front as well, especially if you're hurting or I'm hurting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to be able to use that as a tool to be sincere with the messaging and be like, let's amplify these positive things that are going on. So um, we can really feel hope versus hopelessness. So, so I, yeah. yeah. Um, and we invite businesses in to talk, just kind of like what we are doing now. Right. Um, and it's pretty awesome to to hear some of the the collaborative stories of like nonprofits, businesses, community members, everyone coming together to be like, all right, let's support one another. Reno. I like that. Yeah, I feel like a lot of companies are are doing that. A lot of them are adapting. I mean, like I just ordered masks from a floral company yesterday, face masks, and they're sitting at home making floor masks for everybody or face masks for everybody and that's supplementing their income and all of us self-employed people who are waiting on, you know, SBA loans, unemployment grants and all that stuff. We're just kind of stuck in this boat where nothing's happening and it's very frustrating. So we're finding little, you know, I'm doing this. I, I just started this podcast thing and hopefully it'll keep going. Um, but so uh, the, the other reason that I kind of started doing this was um, Megan, I feel like I don't know anybody. I feel like, People know me as a photographer. I know you as Getaway Reno Tao. I know as your model. I see you, you know, maybe once a month um, at events and stuff. Um, but I don't know you, right? We don't know. I don't know where you're from from. Um, so I want to get to know you. So where are you from? <laughs> that's a good question. Um, uh, first of all, well, thank you. I mean, I think that's really, this is going to be an awesome platform. And I, and I, I agree for me, a, a big part of me having a connection with someone or having a relationship with someone is having that deeper connection, right? Having that, that yeah. better understanding of, of who they are. Um, time goes by so quickly and to take a moment to actually learn about someone's motivation, drive, it's just more depth, right? right? So I appreciate that first, you yeah. know I'm just letting people know when I met you, the first shoot we did at the oldest bar in Genoa, um, <laughs> I think you just finished a fitness competition. I did, yeah. So you were like, yeah, you were super ripped. Uh, you kept getting hit on by all these, these <laughs> older guys that were in there. This one guy like wouldn't get out of our shots. He was, uh, God, that old guy, he would just sit there as I'm trying to shoot and just try to like, he's just looking at you, talking to you. And I'm like, it's cool, buddy. Like, we're, we're here. We're just, we're getting the shot. So that was my, like, my first impression of you was like, cool. And then I was like, oh, but she's also running this part too. Because I didn't put that two together right when we started. Because I was like, she's one of the models. Right. Um, but yeah, let's, I want to hear. I want to hear. Where are you from? What's you up so to? I was born in Hartford, Connecticut. I am oh. a twin. So shout out to my yes. sister, Erin. Mm -hmm. yep, there's, there's That's recent five. for me too. I didn't know that until like, till I think the Christmas time is when you told me. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's like five years later, you're like, what? There's two of you? Yeah, there's two of you. I'm like, are, are you the same person the whole time? That's my mind went. I was like, have I met them? And I just didn't know. Does that mean I have four personalities? I don't know. It's, yeah, it's a little weird every time. But all positive. All positive. All positive. Um, so Hartford, Connecticut was born there. Um, I'm one of six siblings uh, by marriage. My mom had two, dad had two, and then my mom cool. and dad had an, oh shit, we've got twins. So, um... <laughs> After they split up when I was around two years old, we lived in about five different states before the age of 10. Um, my mom, a single mom, just trying to hustle it in terms of her corporate jobs and things like that. Um, so then at around 10 years old, we were in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, my mom is very philosophical, very... Uh, the, the world is connected, and at the time we were dancing uh, with the Grand Rapids Children's Ballet, um, and she saw the Smithsonian Magazine, um, where there was this girl doing a plie on a ricky old front porch, um, just right. a beautiful, 
beautiful, beautiful photograph in her like little ballerina outfit. And um, my mom wanted to get out of the hustle and bustle. So she picked us up, boxed everything up, and we moved to uh, a little town uh, where that photograph was taken called Woolkit, Vermont. Population is that, is that a place that specializes in that? Or, so or just there's a the picture? It was a combination of both. Uh, well, it was mainly the picture. Um, <laughs> she was drawn to it, so we moved there. Uh, at that time, there was a Wolcott Children's Ballet School, and the instructor who was teaching there was from was a, uh, a Russian instructor. Um, and so she was retired, and it was just this like beautiful story of her being a, a, a ballerina teaching children in the New That's England, cute. Northeast backwoods of Vermont. And so we moved there behind a mobile gas station at 10 years old and uh, started taking ballet lessons and or continuing our ballet lessons. And right. that's where I kind of got into some theater and mime. And, and the sad thing is And that mime? You say mime? mime? <laughs> Bro. Oh, my God. Did you wear the face thing? Did you have to paint your okay. face? Not all mimes. <laughs> Or our white face, okay. Oh, uh, that's all we see. Okay. I literally okay. didn't know mimes could go out. If you started doing this, I'd be like, "Oh, you don't know what you're doing." But if you wore the white face, then I'd <laughs> be like, nice "Oh, mime." Writings you could like really just yeah. like, a lot. <laughs> just do the with the box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, um, that then that's how we ended up in Vermont. Um, unfortunately, the uh, instructor came down with breast cancer, so um, she uh, had to retire, and then essentially. The, the school changed, took up sports, went to Stowe, Vermont um, for high school, and then Burlington, Vermont for college, and then, and then took a cross-country road trip and ended up in Lake Tahoe. And, and how'd, you, well, how'd you end up in Lake Tahoe? What stopped you? Um, uh, so at that time, when I was in Vermont, I just growing up in the small state, um, I just I wanted to get out. So after I graduated, I went to... Uh, live in Belgium for about six months for my master's oh, degree. Wow. Um, and then decided that what I was studying wasn't where I wanted to go. Um, came back to the United States, but my mom was like, what are you doing? You're ruining your life. So she, <laughs> sorry, mom, essentially like disowned me. <laughs> like, uh, right. figure it out, you're ruining your life. And uh, I moved cross country with my former boyfriend at the time. And right. uh, we went to Santa Clara, California because that's where he had some friends. Um, and yeah. we were sort of, like, figuring things out. And then it was either I couldn't handle Santa Clara. No offense. I just was like, that's my know, wife's from and I couldn't handle it either. So you're cool. Well, you figure like New England, right. And like the green mountains going to right. like 101 Lawrence expressway working at like a Wells Fargo, <laughs> just, you know, temporary job behind a six inch glass window. Because right. Come in with like sawed off shotguns to rob the bank. I'm like, well, <laughs> what am I yeah. doing? not as exciting. <laughs> So uh, it was either go back to Vermont um, or move to Lake Tahoe. And he was like, let's just, let's just go for it. So we uh, bought some furniture off of Craigslist, filled up a, a little U-Haul and drove That's up. That's awesome. Like, yeah. And then you've been here ever since, right? Yep. Been here like 11 years now, 11, 12. That's, that's awesome. I've been yeah. shooting for 11 years all around the same time. So 2009-ish. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, now with, uh, you know, as, as we kind of go through these, these interviews, these podcasts, um, I'm trying to get with the times and, and obviously we're going through some, some COVID-19, some coronavirus stuff. And um, one of the things that I kind of notice, especially with you guys, Tahoe people, all the Tahoe people <laughs> is, uh, oh my God, wait, what was that story the other day? Was somebody like spitting or licking on food at Safeway? Did you read about that? No. Somebody got arrested yesterday uh, for spitting on food at a Safeway in Tahoe. Disgusting. Yeah. And, um, whether he had Corona or not, I don't get it, but I'm seeing this trend. Like it's showing up every so often on a couple different people's, uh, like platforms where people are doing that. That's my, my Tahoe thing right now. Um, do you feel like people are taking it seriously? Are people staying in or are we still see people, um, doing everything normally walking with, with groups of people going to the beach? I don't know if the beaches are closed. Mm -hmm. um is san harbor closed like i don't even know um so that's so i can't necessarily give a solid answer on that i know with my circles my circle yeah. taking it seriously we're not getting together we're not grouping i guess you can say um you know 
so in my world, my people are taking it seriously, but then, you know, you take a step out of that and you, you read these things and you're like, uh, is that the masses or is that just one apple spoils a bunch? Right. Kind of deal, right. So, um, because I'm a bit more isolated when I go, uh, and thank God my boyfriend's here, David, he's been here for three weeks. He flew yeah, yeah. out essentially four or five days before uh, it was uh, called the national emergency from Denver. Right. So I like, he, he's been like my saving grace. He's stuck here now, huh? <laughs> We're stuck together forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but when we go and we'll take walks around the neighborhood or we'll right. go snowshoe in the backyard or, you know, a couple other times when it was really nice out, we went to a beach and you know, you, you assess, you're like, okay, are there people here? How many right. people are here? Um, but there's also less people around you guys, right? I there's, mean, there's not. The thing is like you walk Africa beach and right. there's two people and that's it. Right. Yeah. So, and there's enough room to dodge left and right, jump through the forest if you need to. Totally. Um, you know, and for me, my sanity and my stabilization has always been the outdoors. And so I know that that has been completely restricted because obviously to, to go out in the back country, to go out and be aggressive with sports, the outdoors, you're then putting not only yourself at risk, but if right. you were to be hurt, injured, the, the team that it would take uh, away from those concentrating on the bigger picture, um, right. the health needs of those in the hospital, like shame on you. You know, I don't like, think people even think of stuff like that, right? Nobody ever thinks about stuff like that. They're just like, they're, yeah. they're sick, they're worried. But, you know, yeah, if, if you have a chance, you know, for me to stay home and not do anything, then why would I get injured to take away from the care of somebody else? Right, right. That's so crazy. it's just like monitoring your, your level, right? Like everything needs to be leveled back. Um, there's no need to, to take anything to an extreme or, or again, a level that would take away from the attention of anyone else. So I like, I yeah, that. well, that's good. I mean, yeah, I think people are taking more seriously now. Um, um, I just have that, that Tahoe vibe in my head where, you know, everybody's just kind of out and about and they're like, you know, since it's such a small area, they're like, it doesn't affect us kind of thing. We haven't really seen anything big in the news um, with Tahoe, but, um, but yeah. All right. So, so sure. we, we work with uh, Getaway Reno Tahoe. You work mm -hmm. with it. Are you still doing new stuff? Because I know that for a while you were in, is it Utah? Mm -hmm. Doing new stuff. Are you still, uh, what, tell me about your accolades. You do a lot. I feel like you do a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's part of me is kind of like, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is it good to be a Jane of all trades? Should I have a focus a little bit more? Um, so... Uh, TV and on screen and producing was never the direction that I thought I was going to go, which is kind of right. fell in my lap. Um, initially it was sustainable development and international relations was my area of focus. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. that sounds sexy. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it was <laughs> once I started studying my master's in Belgium and learning about like bureaucracy of transnational relations and global right. development, you're just like, what impact am I going to have? Um, is, is this political escapade going to be my long-term future and outlook? And I just was like, I got to take a step back. So right. that's where Tahoe came in going cross country. And then at that point in time, it was just, I was, I was working at Wells Fargo. I was doing a side gig with, I've always, I've always learned to hustle. My mom taught me that. Right. I like that. Being a single that's mom smart. and daughters. It's like, take what you can get, do it, work hard and something will present itself. Um, so I definitely applaud her in that regard. Um, and then, so when I was here, it was like, okay, I, I can get a serving job. I'm going to work as a teller at Wells Fargo. I was doing side SEO work. Um, when that was starting to be the big boom 10 years ago. Right. And then I met, uh, Todd with getaway Reno Tahoe. And then that's where, I was serving him raviolis actually. And then I heard all these <laughs> stories about where he's traveled and tourism and blah, blah, blah. And I just essentially was like, I'd like to work for you. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to hire me? And he's like, how are your raviolis? How? <laughs> right. And he's like, well, we, we can't pay you. And I was like, it's okay. I, I want to like this, this sounds like right. something I want to do. And then from there, um, that's where I started with getaway. And then from there I was just kind of inserted into the on camera 
TV role video element and then that yeah. expanded. And then I became a little, a little bit more of like a recognized personality in the community, which then transitioned into a TV gig, um, working with Mountain Resort Television, um, helping produce television shows. And then from Love there, that. they bought uh, Park City Television in Utah. And then um, that's where okay. they, they would bring me out um, as talent for a series of different shows. So we just kind of kept that connection back and forth. It was kind of like a long winded answer, but there's like a build up. <laughs> no, I like that. Yeah. Because it's, yeah, it's not, you know, for even for me to go out and work in like anywhere else other than Nevada, it's like, how did you get there? Like who saw right. you, who, you know? Yeah. So I just thought you were, you know, I saw you on the news. I saw, you know, or right. you're behind the scenes at least. Cause we obviously don't get that here. Uh, uh, Deb McCarthy's here. She says, Hey, uh, Tina is here as well. Um, they're just saying hello. Um, so with both of them, they're amazing people. Yeah. So I'm going to try to get Todd. I want to get Todd onto here as well to talk more about getaway Reno Tahoe. Mm -hmm. Um, it's been a really fun journey with this magazine and I feel like I'm, I'm like an unpaid promoter on the promoter side. Um, because everywhere I go, I'm like, Hey, have you guys heard of getaway Reno Tahoe? Like you can advertise in here. It's like all about local stuff. I'm really trying to get like legends, like everything of legends to get in there, but I don't know how far like out you guys go. It's there if it, if it happens. Um, yeah. How, how is the magazine doing? Um, I know you guys have gone to, I see a lot of emails come in, a lot of digital stuff. A lot of my images are on those digital, which is cool. Um, do you feel like the magazine's uh, getting better in the same, is it getting, is it in the same position that it is as, is, is the vision that, that Todd started, is that still there or has it changed a little bit or is it changing? Um, so I would, it's definitely changed for sure. Um, 10 years ago when I, when I came on board, it was, I was uh, brought on as the lodging liaison. So this was before any on-camera stuff. So it was really building the relationships with the lodging properties to actually carry right. room publication or collateral material. Um, and it was kind of whomever wanted to advertise advertise right? Um, right and then after working with design on edge and really tightening our brand i would say the last five years it's it's become more of a polished piece right yeah. um, really focusing on those individuals and clients and businesses in in this area that have really good stories a really good product places where we would spend our money um above and beyond that you know i think now with this transition um really tapping into that local voice and that local story so it's not right. just like very tourism like hey come experience this because you're a tourist right because that gets boring right i mean yeah. that's that's what every you know i mean that's that's the thing like every magazine i feel like at a point's gonna be that we got to get ad space you know and that mm -hmm. magazines i hate looking at are like the vogues and all that when you open it up and like add 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 and you're mm -hmm. like all right i'm just looking at ads um and i think social media has changed that a lot because people are doing the same thing on their phone right and so people aren't going to magazines so yeah you have to have that like that local poll. And that's kind of what I like about it. Yeah. Um, we'll actually read the stuff. The, the everyone's like, print's going to be dead. Print will never be dead because there's right. content. Right. And then there's also an element where you can put whatever you want on the internet versus like what is actually content written by a writer, copy edited, printed. There's, there's some integrity that, that comes with that. Right. Right? So to use that as a tool to really share and showcase really amazing content and stories um, is where we're going, is where we're headed. And so to be able to take this scenario that we're at um, and, and really force us to push all of our content in a digital format to, yeah. to really just like throw ourselves out there to be like, all right, you know, we're, we're, we're literally pivoting as quickly as possible like everyone else is, but we want to be the platform to help amplify these stories, get them out there and to take that and see how that transitions back into the publication when all of this is quote unquote over will be um, an exciting transition because I've been trying to uh, really push for the, the digital transformation uh, more quickly than you, you can sometimes, right? When, when in business, like slow and steady, you know, wins the race. Right. So. You don't want that like abrupt. I mean, there's something Unless about the print. <laughs> right. I know you're like have to now and people, <laughs> where's my magazine? I can't go to the casino. So you guys are at like, what is it? 18,000 publications quarterly, right? Is it quarterly? Um, so we, we are an 18,000. So I'll say it, it comes and goes between 16 and 18,000. Um, okay. One casino, if they have upper management change, drops us 2,000 and then they'll change their mind and then bring us on again. So I'd just say between 16. Why are people, I mean, 
is it is it free to them to put in the rooms? So so yeah, so we're in like let's just say seventeen thousand hotel rooms, but we print anywhere between forty five and fifty thousand magazines each quarter. So okay. that ends up being about two hundred thousand publications um, each year. Um, and right. then, yes, they distribute them the housekeeping in the actual hotel room. What's the why would somebody say no to that though? Like I mean, I go to hotels and I see, you know, like this, uh, anywhere I go, it's like the city magazine, the, the state magazine and a book or something. I like seeing those. So why would a mag, why would a hotel, if, even if there's upper management change, why would they say, no, we don't want them? Um, so there's a couple of different reasons. Um, limited amenity properties, if they're privately owned, really easy. Of course, you know, it's a, it's, it's a piece of material it's information and great content um right. once you start going into more of the corporate worlds they have agendas that they want to push and messaging that they want to push and branding that they want to push That's so um, stupid. and then um you know uh, there, there's non-competes as well for other collateral materials that are in no. the rooms so if you have one advertiser here you can't have that um this is right. silly baloney and then from the casino world you know Sometimes it depends on uh, the marketing direction that they want, and they don't want to have another casino's restaurant advertised in a magazine. Right, or know, another casino in general. Or another casino. Um, so, Tina's asking, uh, can we get the mag in Reno? Where's like a good spot to grab it in Reno? That's yeah. Not, so, that's uh, not a hotel room? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, any, any of the visitors' authorities would be uh, really great locations to just pick up any type of tourism uh, collateral. And then above and beyond that, we did start street distribution at the areas that advertise with us. So like Yoshi's, Reno NV. Um, cool. And then you can obviously also uh, look it up digitally on issue.com. Right. And, and I always share that as well and through your guys' yeah. page. Um, it's, it's super cool because like, so I'll do a cover and I'll shoot a wedding and I'll shoot a wedding in all the hotels or whatever. And then I like Whitney peak or something, they carry it. Um, but I'll go in and I'll be like, Oh, Hey, this is my cover as I'm shooting. And I'm like, Hey, Hey, bride, bridesmaids, this is my cover. I shot this. And then it gives me a little bit extra push, you know? Um, but when I first started photography, that was my goal. It was like, how do I get on stuff? How do I get on covers? How do that's not like. God, so many photographers, there's these digital magazines that go out that are so sketchy and you have to pay to be on them. You have to pay to upload models or like, I'm in this magazine, I'm published. And it's one of those things where you, you send it in, you pay for it, and then you have to actually buy the magazine. Right. If you want it printed, you have to buy it through the company or get it digitally. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, bro, like, is that, then I never want to do that, but I wanted to legit. So you guys have, you know, now I've been on a few different magazines, a few different companies, but you guys gave me that opportunity. So I'm always grateful for that. And it kind of feels, I feel like I have a little bit more uh, cred in the commercial world because of that, because it's a huge world that we're always fighting. Um, uh, Jeremy and like, know. you know, I think, Try. I think that's the, the biggest, the most wonderful, inspiring thing to be able to use this as a platform is to see how much talent there is in this area in terms of photography, in terms of video, in terms of models, in terms of writers. And I'd love to think that this is a platform that can be used to build what right. you need, what you want for your brand, as long as you're loyal to us, right? As you have been, and you wanted to, to dip your feet into that. And it was like, you know what, you can use this as much as you want and go as far as you want. And, yeah. and now at this point in time, I'm still stoked that you are still a part of it because I guarantee we don't pay you what you're <laughs> worth. <laughs> yeah, that's creative. I mean, that's fun. I mean, well, like this month, I mean, I'm not, you know, like, I'm like, I think every month I'm like, Hey, what do you guys need me to shoot? What do you get? Where can I shoot? Where can I go shoot? Yeah. So I'm always waiting and I get that, you know, things are happening and, and blah. I mean, I didn't get, I could have shot Gordon. I could have shot Ramsey. I saw the picture. No like, I could have no done good. that. Yeah. Freaking. Yeah. But I'm like, uh, but that was cool. Cause yeah, I think, was that your last magazine? Was that the last one that came out was the COVID? Yeah. Well, oh, so no, I'm they, sorry. Was um, it Ramsey? It was the Ramsey, but they gave us that photo. So don't, uh, I know, I know it's like their hell's kitchen photo, but I'm like, why couldn't they just do that? Why couldn't he just be there? Cause I wanted to talk to him. And like, I'm like, I watch your shows, all your shows, sir. <laughs> Every single one of your shows. I needed a new like voicemail. You would have been starstruck for the first time. Yeah. I'd have been like, while I'm doing this, sir, can you just say, Hey, you've reached Jeremy Lou. Can you please <laughs> leave a message? Uh, yeah, well, the funny Ever. thing about that is, is we found out from the marketing team that that wasn't the photo that they actually liked the most. So it was like, oh. well, 
sorry, it's on uh, 50,000 copies. So. Right. And it's such an easy photo. Oh my God. And we yeah. even went to, um, I think like when that came out, I was in, I went to Vegas and we walked by the Hell's Kitchen there yeah. and that photo's up there too. And I'm sitting there like, we could, it, it was done right here. Like all their Hell's Kitchens look exactly the same. We could have done it right here. So, Next time, um, who do you want? Who do you want? I'll get them. Yeah. I'll, get them. I'll want everybody. I just, I'm going to print it. I'm going to have it in the back here, like right there. Um, so we were kind of, we had a little candid talk about, about this today and about setting up everything. And one of the things that you brought up yesterday is, um, with everything going on and hope it's okay to talk about it. You're feeling a little overwhelmed with everything. And that kind of struck me last night as well. Um, you know, I'm asking people to do these interviews. I'm what is happening? Go away. I'm asking these people to do these interviews. I'm kind of taking them out, not really thinking about everybody else's schedule. Mm -hmm. Um, how are you doing? Like, are you, are you feeling okay? I mean, is, is we're going to get through it. We're going to make things happen, but what, what's going on in your mind as you're ma managing yourself, get away, rent the, you know, all this stuff, me design and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, um, kind of touching back on that element of like positivity, right? Um, that's been a muscle that I've strengthened throughout my life. My mom was, um, just suffered from alcoholism and depression. So it was always me being like, it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. It's okay. Like, keep right. going. So I've always been one to be, to, to see the bright light. Um, I will say in this scenario to see like on a global scale that everyone is going through this together. And it's, it's like, yes, it's a moment in time, but it's everyone is so overwhelming and for my like emotional connectedness with things. Right. Um, it's like uh, this emotional roller coaster for me, it can be quite challenging to like hone it down to actually feel productive and like really create time management. Like I don't have kids, you mm -hmm. know, it's just myself and David and it's a right. very quite peaceful environment. Like look at your situation where you have four kids. Five yeah. Now, how many kids? But I don't, I have, I have four that I know of, but like, <laughs> I don't know if I could sit with Lindsay, like you and David. I'm, I don't know if you guys are just sitting on the couch all day and Netflix and chilling. Like, I don't, I can't do that. Like we can't do that. And I think it's because we have kids. Like we can't really deal with the silence. I think married couples with kids, everything starts to change a little bit. Um, where when we first started dating, we could sit anywhere and just like, you know, not have a phone, not hang out, but now it's a lot different. So the kids are kind of a blessing at this point where at least I have something. Oh my, they're fighting each other. I'll go get them. I'll go take care of them. Right. Um, but also on that other end, do you, does it also help you that everybody's going through the same thing rather than just you? Cause if it was just you and all of a sudden, like say you lost your job or you were sick or something like that. And it's just you, that would make me more anxious and, and make me feel more overwhelmed. You know, the thing is like, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I am so much better than, than where so many other people are at in this world. Right. Like I have the beautiful outdoors in my backyard that I can escape to and have clarity and things like that. Um, you know, I think it's that frustration of feeling like I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to yeah. help. How, how, and then, then that energy and that stress that you put on yourself to be like, think creatively, what can we do? Right. So that the overwhelming piece comes down to putting so much pressure on yourself to be able to be like, what can I do? Um, right. and, and there's like a definite element of being like, I'm not doing enough. I, and so, um, and that's always been a pressure that I put on myself. But other than that, like I'm doing okay. Like sometimes you, you wake up and you feel great and you feel motivated to get out of bed and like, you know, worked out at home, watching some videos. And, yeah. um, and uh, I think, I think it's important to talk about because I feel like a lot of people are feeling the same way. I mean, I, I the only communication I have is social media with people. So I see them posting all this fun stuff. I joined TikTok. So we've been doing a lot of TikToks and are you on TikTok? Oh my God. One more platform. Uh, it's, don't block. think of it as a platform. It's just something totally different, but I use it for business, but you just lip syncing, just go on there and do it. You David, get on there and do some TikToks. Um, <laughs> but like, I mean, I only get to see what people are posting and everything's hunky dory and all that, but it's not real. Um, and I like the, I like knowing the idea that I'm not the only one going through things. Totally. Um, and I think it, it's, it's, uh, yesterday we talked a little about mental health and like, that's mm -hmm. the mental health side of it is where you understand that people are going through with you. We can have honest talks about it and it's not all about, Oh my God, you know, everything's happy, hunky dory. We're, we're doing great today. Um, but honestly I spend most of my day going through, 
um, Googling, you know, CNN, PPP, SBA loans, like where's unemployment, where's the stimulus check, where's everything going? And I've made myself more available to people um, mm -hmm. to help them. And I, I, if I can't help them with that, yeah, I'm in the same boat. I'm like, I, I just want to help. Um, and that's the only way that I can do it is from my computer. Totally. So it's, it's one of those things. Um, yeah, I would say like Monday, like, is it, again, it just depends on the day, right? Monday is like right. completely a wreck and it came down to like, yeah, the whole unemployment thing. And, um, you know, obviously I'm looking into that as well, right? Because you look at the longevity of, of the company and let's be honest with no advertisers or with money yeah. coming in, applying for that loan and being an independent. Have you, company. have you applied for those things? Not yet. No, um, I am in the process of getting my taxes done for 2019. So I'll have a better understanding if I should, I, Right. If I should actually file them or if I should go for my 2018. So I'm in the No, do – are you considered self-employed or no? I am self-employed. So if you don't have 2019, they'll use 2018. So I haven't done my 2000 um, – I did my taxes into – so my last taxes were for 2019. I haven't done this last year. But they'll go back to whatever they need to go for. Unemployment has nothing to do with that tax season. It's only based off what you're working on before you got um, – business closure. Right. So right. I highly recommend, and I'll just keep staying close to my page, but right now, um, DETR Nevada says that they're building a special platform for self-employed. Right. So all of us that have applied for self-employed are going to have to reapply again. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll let you know when that happens. But as far as like PPA loans apply for everything because it's taken them some time to get through. And then the only thing they can say is no, um, or they've changed it or whatever. Right. Um, but don't wait on things like, I didn't do my taxes this year. I'm extending it to the end of the year. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of in terms of feeling like overwhelmed. I think that's a big one for me being like yeah. the uncertainty of like, I don't know. It's, I think it's where we're all at, right? Paralyzing. It's like paralyzing. Yeah. Where do I start? And it's, yeah, it's just sitting down being like, well, hopefully I do this, right? Because if not, hopefully I'm not fucked. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the, the beauty of it is, is a lot of us, I, you go on all these forums and as I read the forums, everybody's fucked. Everybody's like, did I do it right? Did I do it right? Um, Oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's insane, but I'll help you through anything. Just let me know when you get to that point. I'll kind of okay. send you some links, guide you through it. Um, it's really easy. Once you have everything kind of set up on your computer, you just, I literally did it again last night too with another company and, um, but I'm in a waiting game. We're all in a waiting game. So even those of us have done it at the beginning, you know, you're not out of the boat. Um, so don't feel like that at all. How are you, are, are you an introvert or extrovert? You're an extrovert, right? I am an introverted extrovert. Or is what it an frick? extroverted? Or maybe it's an extroverted. Okay, so are we making this up right now? Are we creating no. something? No. <laughs> um, you can. I don't know who said it, but there's not just two, right? Okay. Like, how right. do you recharge? I love meeting people. I love going to shindigs, whatever you name it, um, and hearing people's stories. But for me to actually recharge, I need to be by myself. Okay. I need like that that quiet time. And so, so there's, there's an element where it's, it's both. So I don't know, look it up. I, yeah. Read whoever yeah. said that where it's like a combination of both. I'll look it up. I mean, I, I was having this conversation with, oh my God, I can't remember who somebody at an event I was shooting like a couple months ago. And I consider myself an introvert. Um, I, and she was talking about the same thing about energy, right? Mm -hmm. So she's like uh, true extroverts will talk to people. They'll take their energy and then they can use that energy to keep going and keep going. And mm -hmm. when they're done, they need to find that energy. So they'll go out to a club or they'll go to a comedy club and keep the energy going. Um, and she's like, but her and the kind of describe me is I can go out, I can meet people. I can talk. If I have a camera, I can shoot and I can, you know, people will laugh, people will love me. But then when I'm done and I get in the car or I wind down, I just don't talk to anybody. I don't smile head down. Um, and I'm just like, I'm done. Like, I don't want to go to another party. I don't want to do anything. Um, I'm happy to go grab a drink at a bar by myself. I'm, I'm fine being by myself. And I think that scares a lot of people. So they don't really want to admit stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but is that kind of the same thing that you were talking about? Totally. totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Which I think, you know, I took to like re-energize and like to like feel good. It is, is it, it's not to like go to a club or like go be right. around people um, for as like extrovert ish that I am. Um, the people who are really close to me and connected to me and know me really well. It's like, it's, it's a very tight, tight circle. 
So right. it's like I extend myself out just enough to be able to like really have that wonderful engagement, <laughs> but the connectedness might not be there, if that makes right. sense. No, I'm the same way. I'll, uh, I mean, I can talk to somebody for 20 minutes and then not remember their name, not remember the conversation. Um, but I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's a defense mechanism that I created when I was younger just to make people like me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's weird. And I did, I think I shamed myself for a long time thinking that I needed to be an extrovert. I remember, um, going to parties, being in the corner and then people would call me out for being in the corner, not talking to other people. And I just didn't want to, but I felt like I had to. And then I would literally just walk to somebody and just stand in a circle with them and just, you know, look at everybody. And I'm like, is this what we're supposed to do? Right. Uh, but yeah, I like that. And yeah, I, I, now I don't mind being an introvert. Like I'll go and do a shoot and I'll come home and I'll just turn something on the TV, something dumb, or I'll play video games, um, just so I can clear, um, and not talk to anybody and not look at emails or, or anything like that. How's your email going on right now? Is it crazy still, even though? Yeah, I mean, it's going, I mean, my God, it's, if I get one more COVID email, I'm just like, <laughs> send, send the kittens and the puppies, please. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, first on that point of like you putting that pressure on yourself, there's definitely a societal thing where it's like, you're supposed to be out all the time and seen and this and right. that. Right. And especially with the whole social environment too, where it's like, you're constantly connected, you're constantly engaged. Your, your validation is based on your impressions, your likes. I mean, it's, it's all fucking bullshit. Right. You know? Um, and to really like tap into those like true serious connections, like those are few and far between. And, and to be quite honest, when it comes to your time, those are going to be a lot more than all these other like little sprinkle touch points. So right. I'm right there with you. And like the human connection is powerful. And I think kindness goes a long way to, to give to everyone, but you don't need to be best friends with everyone. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I don't even know if I have a best friend at this point, um, which is fine. Like I'm cool. Like I have my family, I have my kids, I have my wife. And I think we're just kind of in our world. I have a ton of acquaintance. Oh, do it. You have it printed out? On that. that you, so I read a book. Oh. So my, my, my routine is I try to listen to a little headspace meditation every morning when I wake up. I try not to look at emails and stuff in bed, especially with everything Ooh, going on right now. Yeah. Right? And I'm horrible at that. Wake up. Don't do it because you get sucked in. That's every and day. Then before I sit down for work, um, my friend gave me this book. It's called I Really Needed This Today by Hoda, I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Hoda, Koda, Koda, Hoda, Koda. Koda, mm-hmm. and what's today, the ninth? And so I'll read this and then I'll, I also have a little journal. I try to do it every day just to like flush out whatever, feel it and then let it go. And today's quote is, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. St. Oh. Teresa. And it uh, says, this just cuts through all the noise, doesn't it? How about today when you're with someone you love, ask them to dance before you get to the business of dinner or bills or homework, take a little three minute spin around the living room and create a little magic. It's true. I like that. So yeah, I mean, really, and I'm guilty of this. We go through our daily, our daily lives. We go through everything, the same thing every single day. And we kind of get stuck in that rut. Right. And we forget to kind of stop, you know, what if we weren't here tomorrow? Like, is that really the stuff we're going to care about? It's such a, like a double edged sword though. You know, I mean, it's hard. Like I can say that all day, but in my mind, I know today I'm going to do the stuff that I have to do, even though I'm not working, I'm going to do the stuff that I need to do before I take that leisure time, um, right. to hang out with the kids and, and run around with them. Um, yeah, it's crazy. What's, uh, what's David doing right now? Um, shaving <laughs> he has no hair does he have hair he, has, he doesn't well, have hair like, I mean I will say like uh, he, he he manscapes very well like you do yes. too yeah well I'm um, Asian so I don't grow anything <laughs> okay well he's Just, Kenyan he, this is normal <laughs> yeah so uh, it's a bit of a process, like, you know, to, to buzz cut the head, like clean the uh, chest, whatever yeah. else so um, that's yeah. uh, <laughs> I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, I've always, uh, I'm intrigued by him. Every time I see him, he's uh, very alpha to me, um, which I like. So how, how are you guys doing? How's the relationship going? Are you guys 
the same or do you guys opposite? Do you guys balance each other out? Mm-hmm. No, we totally balance each other out. You know, I think for the longest time we were a long distance relationship. You know, when I first met him, it was in San Francisco and he had just bought a place in Nicaragua to part-time retire and live yeah. down there. And here I'm in Tahoe. So I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> how's this going to work? Um, and so we're both very, uh, uh, very involved with like our lives and what we do and we have goals and we have motivation. And so it kind of was one of those things being like, okay, I'm going to step out of my world, step in yours and vice versa. So this situation um, really kind of like we want to support and love each other and and, right. that, and, and be near one another. And so um, he actually, uh, for, for, for me, for us, he, um, <laughs> got a job in Denver actually so we could be closer Um, because I mean having a a career or a job that actually gives you purpose is is really important for myself and for him too and so Tahoe isn't necessarily the most conducive environment to to find like a a higher end job if that makes sense so um, he had a remote job in Denver uh, working kind of the the western market so that allows him to kind of tiptoe back and forth but with him being in Denver and me being here and when all this happened it was like if you can work remotely from here anywhere yeah out of the city like I hope you can make that happen and he did in four days and and uh, now he's now we've been together and like I he's just such a support for me and like I can't imagine a, a another partner like he's just my yin and my yang. I know that sounds oh, like so cheesy, awesome. but yeah, it's like, yeah no, you went you went Asian there. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's uh he's wonderful. Like he motivates me on the days that I need it, and vice versa. And he's my support, and I'm his. And it's it's. Is this the life. longest that you guys have been together? Together. Mm-hmm. Cool. That's cool. Like like day in day out, don't leave the house. Don't yeah, are you? Guys, I mean, is that is that so. building tension? Are you guys any fights? And if so, like, what kind of fights are you having? You know, I so I mean, Nothing. knock on wood, like yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But it's, it's not like we're numb to it. It's just like he's just so solid and so stable, and like we we're we're both healthy with routines. That it's like okay, let's get up and let's work out. Fitness is important. All right. You have your job connect over in your space. I'll connect with mine. Right. Like, um, you know, I think if, if anything, like I was a little tired today and cranky, so I was a little snappy uh-huh. and, and so, but that's you went not to go shave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then I also have to like retract and be like, I'm just tired. I'm just exhausted. Like, right. sorry sweetie, for being short, you know? So, um, yeah. I'm horrible. We're horrible at that. FYI. Um, I'm always like, I, when I get tired or hungry, I get short, but I'm never going to like, I never retract that. And that's just how I grew up. It's like, okay, you you don't come on. If you're hangry, you just go take a nap. Yeah. But like, you should just know that I'm hangry and we don't need to have a conversation about it. Right. It's like, I'm hangry. I'm tired. Like that's what's happening. There's there's nothing about you. It's just me. So introvert, go, don't don't talk to me. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go over here and hang out and, and live my dreams. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. The love is the love is strong. And so, you know, I think the big thing for me is like, okay, now when this is over, like what, what does that mean? Right. Cause I, I've now realized that we are such compatible partners that I'm like, yeah, I don't think I can have like that long distance between. So we're figuring that out. Are you guys, hopefully it's not too far. Are you guys planning on marriage? I mean, like we, I've always, my, my family's always ended up in divorce. Let's just say that. So yeah, but you can't do that. Like like a very like, I don't really know, but Uh Lindsay's parents are divorced. My parents are divorced. (laughs) All right. I'll find his email somewhere. Stop. This is recorded. I'm going to be a big deal. He's going to like, Oh shit. He's going to watch this five years from now and it's still not happening. He's like, Oh shit. (laughs) This supposed to happen five years ago. (laughs) Um, no, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's hard because, um, yeah, our parents, both our parents were. And so we, but we didn't think about it like that. You know, if, if we make it, we make it, we don't, we don't. Um, and honestly nothing changed like with the ring. Um, but you are stuck together. Um, and you can do more things, you know, I'm like, does it really feel any different than right now? (laughs) Being no. stuck together. I mean, the other yeah. day, literally, I took a comforter zipper. You know the bags that the comforters come in. The duvet. Oh wait. Oh yeah. Zipper, You're talking about. Yeah. I, like I covered it on myself because there's like some ridiculous. Yeah, I saw your picture. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> he shoved him in it with me and oh. zipped him up. And I was just like, <laughs> together forever. Yeah. <laughs> you keep, if you keep saying that to him, he's going to be like, oh, I see these hints. Oh, just God. leaving like magazines around of like brides. Oh, God. Just laying around. That's what you should do. You should start like pranking him a little bit and just leaving stuff like that out and just be like, oh, babe, no, it's cool. Yeah, we're doing a thing. Have, have a wedding dress in your, in your room. Ah, that'd be awesome. So I want you to put yourself in a position when this is all over, um, when we're able to go back to work and do our thing and, and um, we have the digital stuff going, we have the magazine back. What's the focus here? What are we doing? What are you doing um, yeah. to keep pushing? Yeah, well, I think I've really realized that we're kind of like creating this digital show. Yeah. Um, get virtual like just quickly and people are responding really well that um, once the TV station moved from Tahoe over to Park City um, kind of like my consistent on camera uh, faded away mm -hmm. um, so now this is kind of like really rebooted that um, and I think trying to kind of step in that direction a little bit more because it has been really uplifting and inspiring to be able to create something to to ask people these questions, ask them your stories. Like, what are you doing? How are you supporting? Like, it, I, I, I absolutely love it. So I can't right. help but, but now really like steer into that element a bit more. And um, whether that is specifically with Getaway or my own entity, I'm not really sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Are you, are you going to do it as your own entity and then kind of push it into Getaway? Because you have to make the, that decision early, right? I could, I could do that. You know, I think it's just kind of like, what does this area need? Right. You know, like, um, and, and what can I give? I guess if that makes sense. Right. Cause I just, and I would really want to be very particular about it. I don't want to be some like, everyone's doing it. It's been done before. Like what is the core of it and how is it, can, how does it connect people? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, the beginning is gonna be a lot different than, than what it ultimately ends up being. Yeah. Um, but I like that. I like, you know, being able to have a say in, in your career and using this platform um, and you'll get out there and meet a lot more people, but you have that connection, which is good up there. Um, I love this. So I want to give you a, um, can you hear my email every single time it dings? No, but can you hear mine? No, because I hear I it in my ear. Yeah. So I hear it like, ding, but I don't hear yours at all. I think the way zoom works, like they, you can't, so I don't even think I need these. This is how okay. I'm hearing you, but I'm doing this for feedback because I don't want it to be like, um, through my speakers, so I'm, I'm too afraid not to do it. I just Give see all my me... pop-ups, and I'm like, oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, my, my camera's here, but you're here. So I'm looking at you, but, like, I can't, there's no way for, I wanted for me to do it. Like, you're, it looks like you're looking directly at me, but I've tried to work this system out where my camera's here. I, yeah, I can't do it. So people, I have to, like, stare. When I'm looking here, I'm looking at nothing. <laughs> I'm just, like, looking at a lens, and so I'm yeah. trying to remind myself to do that. So give me like a good uh, 30 second minute spiel business wise for everybody that's watching this, that will be listening to this. This will all go on YouTube as well. Um, just about you, how to find you and, and pimp yourself out. Go for it. Oh my gosh. I have to pimp myself out. I mean, yeah, you know, is this the promo? This is, this won't be, <laughs> but <laughs> all right. Hey, all you hustlers out there. <laughs> It's probably backwards, is it? <laughs> she's hold no, she's holding a cup up, everybody on the podcast, <laughs> that says hustle. <laughs> I have to remember stuff like that, because then people are going to listen to this and be like, what the frick, bro? What's happening? I don't know what's um, happening. Uh, yeah, so I, I think from like a, a business standpoint, I'm at a, a point in my life where there's a lot of transition, um, and there's, there are a lot of different directions, right? And so really trying to hone in on where I want to focus and really where I want to send this energy. I think it's okay to be able to do um, a little bit of a lot of things. I think that's a, a beautiful element to be able to keep yourself adaptable and versatile, um, you know, but I think at this point in my life, really being able to emphasize and point myself in a direction, I'm just going to take a step forward and just do it as I had to do with pivoting my role in this company, Getaway Reno Tau, during COVID-19. And it has been a success and people have appreciated um, just the ability to, to have a platform to give voice and amplify. So I think it just kind of reinforces like, even if it's not perfect, even if it's not exactly what you envisioned, just do it, go for it, learn from it. And 
the world will literally open up to whatever your next step is and wherever that is. I so love it. Along at Megan Burke, M E G H A N B U R K, no E. <laughs> Perfect. Wait, is that dot com? So I do, I do have meganburke.com. I have not made a website yet. Get on it. What's happening? I, but I know. It's, I'm, I'm doing this yeah, virtual thing. I'm trying to do other. I know. Things. Well, yeah, it'll be good to push everybody to one location, but you're on Facebook. I tagged you on this, yeah, on Facebook. Instagram as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm sure people will find you, but yeah, once you have that website, filtering everything there with all, all your accolades and all your stuff would actually be super cool. Yeah. Um, and kind of rock out. We are going to come off of live. I'm going to keep you on here for a second. Um, but thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. You are, um, one of those people that I, I think you're younger than me, right? How old are you? I'm 33. Yeah. So I'm 36. So um, but I feel Ooh, like it's so good shaven. Oh, is he there? Yeah. He just is he wearing clothes. Oh, sweet. Oh, he's naked. I anticipated that. I wish he I just was like, naked. like a baby <laughs> after this, after this, you can take a little break, make it happen. Uh, but no, I, I thank you for, for doing this. Um, you're one of the people that I do actually admire. Um, for some reason, I don't know, like, I meet people and I feel like they're, and this is not like an age thing, but I feel like they're older than me in maturity. And that's one of the people like with you. And I think it's just the way you present yourself. I mean, even that day that we went to the, the olive place for a shoot, uh, olive oil place. And you yelled at that guy. Um, do you remember this? Oh my God. <laughs> what did you yell at him about? Like, what was that? He was oh. saying something about 30 year olds or millennials or something. I can't remember. Oh yeah. Um, essentially how they're just like completely disconnected and have no regard for anything. Okay, let's pre this is a guy we were shooting at a location yeah. of olive oil or something. And, and this guy was just a patron sitting at the bar eating olive oil. And he said something to us and you know, I'm always cool with like, okay, like cool, bro. Like I'm never going to see you again. And then I just turn around and I turn back and you're like, like that. <laughs> I try to do it in a very poised manner. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's it's one of those things where where uh, his 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 thought process was very narrow, right? And I, I I just can't help but be like, take a moment, think about what you just said, think how it's received, and maybe think a little bit differently. That's good. Yeah, I don't do that at all. Um, I, I should can't. have just said, shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, I ultimately I think that's what he got out of it. Because I was like, oh, shit, like this guy, he's like, every time he's olive oil now, he's going to be like, oh, no, like he'll have that memory. <laughs> Thanks to olive oil. Uh, Rebecca said, well said, Megan. And she said, I was there. LOL. Yep, you were there. <laughs> My models. Um, all right. So thank you guys uh, so much for watching. We're going to jump off live. Megan, I'll keep you on here. Go ahead and say bye. Bye. Hi, Becca. Bye, Becca. <laughs> All right, it's pulling off. Cool. Thanks so much. What are you going to do the rest of the day? Um, I'm going to start going through some of these emails. I'll just keep popping up. Um, we're going to do that virtual show. And then I think we're going to go out and do a little snowshoe um, later this afternoon just to kind of get some outdoors. Where do you guys go? Well, I think we might go over towards Chickpea Ridge or Mount Rose okay. area because that big meadow, big, big, yeah. big meadow. You guys have your own snowshoes? I want to take the kids out there. Um, I've been trying to take them sledding or something, but, um, you should, I mean, it's, it's a very vast area. Yeah. Um, so it's easy to stay away from people. <laughs> We're yeah, just like, I mean, so ridiculous to say, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's easy to well, say. It gives me a reason. I dodge people anyways. Like, even if I yeah. see somebody coming, I'm like, Oh, Hey buddy. Like, you know, like we're not going to talk. Um, so this gives us a reason, but no, even when I, even back when I shot there, like when I shoot there all the time, it's empty. Right. Um, like I can go anywhere and I'm always by myself. So that's mm -hmm. fun. How did you think this went? Pretty good? I think it was great. I think it was wonderful. It was very, um, it was very real. It was very raw. Huh, get that. <laughs> yeah, raw folk. I know Courtney name. and yeah. Courtney helped me come up with a name. I was trying to picture something, but I got a logo now. I got a name. Nice. Um, I got a SoundCloud account. So I'm going to start uploading these. Uh, and then, of course, YouTube's already working. But um, yeah, I like these. I just want to know more about people. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, that's always been my thing. It's like, I know people and... And sometimes a name will get mentioned. And I'm like, oh, I think I know them or I know of them. And then I'll say something and they're like, oh, that's wrong, uh, like about them. And I'm like, oh, shit. Well, maybe I don't know. Um, 
No, I think it's a true point, right? Like a lot of people, a lot of uh, things are so surface right now, right? Even with social media, my account, right? Um, it's surface level for me. It, it, yeah. it does show you in the best light. I don't take pictures of me crying when I was having like a breakdown on Monday. Right. You know what I mean? Of and like, who does, right? I mean. Exactly. And I'm like, so, so again, the, the surface level and to be able to actually tap into something more meaningful and deeper, it's going to be more memorable. Yay. Well, thank you so much. All right. Well, have fun. Keep me posted on everything that we need to do. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, I'll be independent. So um, whatever you guys need me to do, just let me know and I'll do it. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll connect with Courtney to get that, uh, that credential um, because I, I actually need to connect with her on a couple other things. Um, yeah. Just to be like, here you go, get going. Yeah, if she can make it for like the team, like a general, just, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be cool for us yeah. all to have anyways when we go anywhere and introduce mm -hmm. ourselves. All right, well, have fun. You can end the meeting anytime. I'm going to keep this going. I have to record your intro. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks. Good talking to you. Bye. I appreciate you. Bye. You too.